Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Uh, I will be discussing with you about the uh, air standard cycles and we will look at the analysis of different air standard cycles related to internal combustion engines. So first of all, you know, if you look at any ideal air standard cycle, we will define certain parameters. For example, we will look at this four stroke engine. And there are four stroke, the first stroke is intake, then followed by compression, followed by expansion and exhaust. Okay. This is the mechanical cycle. And in the intake stroke, actually, the intake valve opens and the piston moves from top dead center to the bottom dead center. This uh, distance between the top dead center and the cylinder head is basically termed as clearance volume. And the distance between top dead center and bottom dead center, this is treated as swapped volume. And this is the total volume of the cylinder. Okay. So during the intake stroke, this total volume is filled with air. And during the compression stroke, we are compressing it. So the temperature and pressure rises. And then we inject the fuel and somehow we add the, we are not specifying right now whether it's auto cycle or diesel cycle, we are talking about air standard cycle, though, so the working fluid is only air. Okay? And there are many assumptions that are taken. So anyway, somehow you add the heat, okay? and because of that heat addition, the pressure and temperature increases in the combustion chamber, and then the expansion takes place. Okay? And then exhaust valve opens, and, and then piston pushes the exhaust gases out. So the cylinder is emptied and it is ready for the next cycle. Now, if you want to analyze this actual engine cycle, it will be very complicated because you know the temperature and pressure of the working fluid is changing. Even the composition of the working fluid is changing because in, in the beginning, if it is a CI engine, we are taking only the air in and then we are putting in fuel, which is the liquid in liquid state. It vaporizes, then products of combustion takes place, formation of water vapor and formation of carbon dioxide takes place. So the CP is changing continuously. CP also depends on pressure and temperature, which is continuously changing. So if you want to analyze this actual cycle of an IC engine, it becomes fairly complicated. In order to make it simple and in order to do the initial, the first cut analysis, what we do is what we call as ideal air standard cycle and there are many assumptions i'll talk about them a little later but let us understand you know if we model each of these processes so what is the first process the first process is compression process or, or intake process okay and then it's followed by compression then it is followed by heat addition then it is followed by expansion and then exhaust stroke okay so what we do is, in order, in, in order to analyze it uh, with a reasonable level of uh, sophistication, what we do is we assume the working fluid to be uh, air and also we assume each of these processes to be ideal process. We know that in real life ideal processes are impossible to achieve, but still what it does is it makes our life simpler when we are analyzing them. Okay, so what we do, we simulate the complete engine cycle by modeling each of these processes, ideal processes, and then it gives us reasonable amount of information in a very, very simple manner about the engine performance and whatever is happening inside. And these model cycles are often called, you know, air standard cycles because we are assuming the air to be the working fluid. Air is not the only, only working fluid in actual engine, it is also the fluid, uh, the fuel fuel is also a working fluid. So in air standard cycle, there is a certain mass of air that operates in a complete thermodynamic cycle and heat is added and rejected with external heat reservoirs. That is what we assume. So heat is 
added from the external heat reservoirs and all processes in the cycle are assumed to be reversible because that gives us the best possible efficiency and simplest processes for the analysis when we assume them to be uh, reversible. If the moment we introduce irreversibility, our, our uh, analysis becomes little more complicated. So what we will do is we will begin with simple uh, analysis and towards the later lectures we will look at the actual analysis uh, of the engine. So there are uh, three air standard cycles, you know, first is the uh, three air standard cycles, first is the auto cycle. So auto cycle is primarily uh, applied to spark ignition engine and then there is a diesel cycle, okay which is primarily applied to compression ignition or diesel engines. And then there is a limited pressure cycle or mixed cycle, which is nothing but hybrid of these two cycles, which is called dual cycle, okay. <coughs> so let's look at uh, some of these cycles in great detail. For example, if you look at an actual cycle in an engine, actual cycle is this, okay. Here on the x axis you have cylinder volume and on the y axis you have cylinder pressure. Now if you want to analyze it, this represents the actual processes that are happening. If you want to analyze this, it becomes extremely complicated. Okay? So in order to simplify this, what we do is we assume each of these processes that are happening to be ideal processes and we draw this air standard cycle. So this is the PV diagram, so on the y axis you have the pressure on the x-axis you have the volume and you, this is a firing spark ignition engine with a compression ratio of 8.4, engine is rotating at 3500 30, rpm, induct air pressure is about 0.4 atmosphere, exhaust pressure is 1 atmosphere and this is what it is. So you see the first process is this, point number 1 is this, so you are actually compressing so 1, 2, when we say ideal cycle, what is the ideal compression um, process? It's isentropic compression, right? So we assume it to be isentropic compression. Then the next stage is 2, 3, which is constant volume heat addition, okay? So here this is constant volume heat addition. So the, all the heat is added when your piston is at TDC, okay? And then you have expansion process. So obviously this will also be isentropic expansion process. And then there is exhaust blowdown as soon as you open the valve, the pressure will fall and remaining gases are pushed out, 5, 6 is the process where the piston is actually physically pushing out the exhaust gases out of the cylinder. So it is a constant pressure process, okay. And then 6, 1 is the intake process. So if you look at this, intake is from 6 to 1, compression constant pressure, constant volume heat addition, isentropic expansion and then exhaust blowdown and exhaust. These are the four processes. So if you look at the actual analysis, intake and exhaust processes are constant pressure processes. So they really have not much significance in the engine uh, analysis of the engine. So this forms a little bit of a loop. So if you analyze the actual cycle, this is where the power is being generated, okay. So this is called positive loop. Okay, and this is where the power is being drained out of the system because when you are sucking or you are pushing the gases out, the, the power is required to do that action. So this is called negative loop. So once you want to, in an ideal cycle, this will be just a line, so there will be no area, right. So in this loop, the power is generated. In this loop, the power is absorbed. So when you want to find out the net power output, it will be the area of this loop minus the area of this loop that will give you the net power output. In this case, when you are doing the air standard cycle analysis, obviously this loop does not have any area because these are coincident lines, okay. So its area is 0. So the net power output will be the actually the area of this particular loop, okay. So this is the difference between ideal cycle and actual cycle when we analyze it. Yes. Same yeah. Five, yeah. But that intake and uh, exhaust pressure are different. In actual cycle, this is the actual one. This is the ideal one. But sir, for for this one, the intake pressure is 0.4 atm and the exhaust pressure, it is 1 atm. So no, this is applicable to this one. 
AS standard cycle, you can't specify these values. Okay. So this is for this one. Okay. So process of IC engines are not reversible, we know. Okay. While AS standard processes are assumed to be reversible because we want our analysis to be simpler. In IC engines, air fuel mixture acts as a working fluid. But in air standard cycle, we only assume the air to be the working fluid, just the air. In IC engines, individual processes are not distinctly identifiable. So in this C, you can see in this, it is very difficult to identify where the heat addition started. Okay. It is very easily distinguishable here in the air standard cycle. Okay. So where the exhaust blowdown started, you cannot identify from this. But here it is very clearly identifiable. So, so this is you know, these different processes actually often overlap each other. Okay? In air standard cycle, the processes are very, very distinctly identifiable and they, they do not overlap. One, the second process starts when the first gets over. So this is one of the major features that you can see from or note from this. Okay? <coughs> so in air standard cycle, a, uh, cycle, air is considered to be the working fluid and even in this air, we are assuming that it is an ideal gas. Ideal gas means that when the pressure and temperature increases or it is it's, uh, Cp and Cv, its properties do not change with increase in temperature and pressure. So air is the working fluid and that also we assume to be ideal gas. In IC engines, working fluid specific heats change with pressure and temperature in real life. But here when we do air standard cycle, we assume them to be constant. In air standard cycle, these are assumed to be constant. So if we just look at the analysis of the auto cycle, so this is the auto cycle. You know, for, for most of the cycle analysis, we have seen that you know, these two processes of intake and exhaust are really not very significant because they are overlapping each other. They don't have any area. So whenever we say auto cycle, it's OK only to show two strokes. Which two strokes? One is the compression stroke, the other one is expansion stroke. And we assume this to be exhaust. You know, it is exhaust, it's actually, it's an exhaust blowdown process, but not really the stroke. Stroke is when you move from four point towards this. Okay. So this is what we want to analyze. So any air standard cycle can be analyzed using two diagrams. One is the PV diagram, okay, the other one is TS diagram. So both of these processes are shown here. If you look at this, 1 to 2 is assumed to be a isentropic process and this is an isentropic compression. So the work is being done on the system, you are providing external power to undertake this compression process. Okay? On a TS diagram, this is isentropic, so it is a straight line. Okay? And when you do isentropic compression, what happens? The temperature rises. So you can see here, entropy remains constant, but the temperature rises on a TS diagram. Okay. In PV diagram, the pressure increases, but the volume shrinks. Okay. So you can see it is, it is like this. Okay. Second process in the auto cycle is constant volume heat addition. So in this case, the volume remains constant, but obviously when you are doing the heat addition, the pressure will rise. So this is the second process where heat is being added. Okay. Here it is shown that it is added externally. In an actual engine cycle, SI engine cycle, it is the fuel's chemical energy that is released. Okay? So, so it is released and that is how the temperature is going to rise. So here 2, 3 is constant volume heat addition. So you can see the, here the volume remains constant. Here also the volume remains constant. And when you do the heat release, the pressure and uh, entropy both actually increase okay? on a TS diagram. Th process number 3, 4, this is a expansion process. So in the expansion process, it is also an isentropic process. So in this process 3, 4, it is exp expanding. So when, when the working fluid expands, the piston comes down from BDC to, uh, from the TDC to the BDC and as a result, this process takes place. And here this is an isentropic process. So on a TS diagram, you can see that the expansion takes place at constant entropy and since the expansion is taking place, the temperature will fall. As a result, this is the process number 3, 4. Fourth is the exhaust blowdown process. That means you open the valve and allow the pressure which is above the atmospheric pressure to go out. So 4, 1 is the exhaust blowdown. 
So when the exhaust blowdown happen, the hot working fluid, which is hot air in this case, takes away, removes the energy, heat energy from it. So the external energy, the, the energy goes out, Q2 energy is, uh, heat is uh, being lost from the cycle. And then again, you know, you have the exhaust and intake and you just ignore them. So this is the process 4-1 on, and it is also a constant volume process, okay? So this is what it is, you know, there are two processes which are isentropic process, two processes which are uh, isochoric processes, okay, because they are a constant volume process. So here also you can see these are isochoric processes and these are isentropic processes, okay? And you can see the heat interaction and work interaction with the surroundings. So now we'll do analysis of it. So <clears throat> the process contains basically two reversible adiabatic processes, which are constant endopy processes, and two reversible isochoric processes. So let's see, we will do the analysis, and maybe you can note down the entire analysis that we are going to do. <clears throat> see, in this process, one to two is, one to two is a isentropic process. And so we can write V1 by V2 is equal to V4 upon V3. And that will be equal to what? What is V1 by V2? And what is v, V4 by V3? This is the volume when the piston is at, when the volume of the cylinder is maximum. This is the volume of the cylinder when the piston is at TDC, minimum volume. What is the definition? This is the definition of nothing but compression ratio, right? So this is R. So this is the compression ratio, okay? Now we define another parameter which is called P3 by P2. P3 by P2 is what? Pressure at the end of the heat addition divided by pressure at the end of the uh, at the beginning of the heat addition. Now these are two isentropic processes. So whatever this, uh, if you take this process and this process, the ratio is going to remain same. So you write this as P4 by P2, and that will be equal to P4 by P1, and this you write as RC. This is called pressure ratio. Oh, sorry, RP, pressure ratio. Okay, so <clears throat> what is V2? If you write V2, V2 is equal to V3 and this is equal to clearance volume. So you can write from here V3 is equal to V2 is equal to Vc. And Vc is nothing but clearance volume. Okay, now, <clears throat> Compression ratio R is what? V1 by V2. And V1 can then be written as, in the form of swept volume and clearance volume, this can be written as swept volume plus clearance volume upon clearance volume. Vs plus Vc upon Vc. And this can then be written as 1 plus Vs upon Vc. This is one definition of compression ratio, and this is how you can actually calculate the compression ratio in case of SI engine or for that matter, even the CI engine. Now, you remember I discussed about how you define the thermal efficiency of, or efficiency for that matter. So in this case, when we want to define the efficiency, we would say whatever is the network output, what we are getting divided by what we are paying. What we are paying is basically Q1, Q1 is what we are putting. So efficiency definition will be W net upon Q1. And you know, we are applying the first law and we are assuming that there are no heat losses. So W net will also be equal to Q net, right? And this, so this can be written as Q net upon Q1. What is Q net? Q net is, Q net is Q1 minus Q2. So this can be written as Q1 minus Q2 upon Q1. 
and therefore this can also be written as 1 minus q2 upon q1. So the definition of the efficiency can therefore be uh, 1 minus the heat rejected divided by heat input. Okay. <coughs> so now if you see if you have to basically write q1, what is q1? q1 is suppose the mass of the contents of the cylinder or the working fluid that is there in the engine combustion chamber is m then q1 can be written as m and what is this process? This is at constant volume right. So Cv into high temperature minus low temperature in the end and the beginning of the heat addition process. So this can be written very well. Similarly you can write Q2 is equal to M, Q2 is what? Heat being rejected, this is applicable to process 4.1. So M is the content into Cv, uh, remember we have said it is air standard cycle, properties of the working fluid does not change. So this can be written as Cv into T4 minus T1, this is what is the heat being rejected. Now you put these two values in this equation and therefore you can write efficiency is equal to 1 minus MCV T4 minus T1 divided by MCV T3 minus T2, right. So M gets cancelled out, CV also gets cancelled out. So <coughs> the definition of efficiency in terms of temperatures of the processes can therefore be written as 1 minus T4 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T2. This is one definition of thermal efficiency in terms of extreme temperatures. Okay? So this is how the analysis, the initial analysis for uh, auto cycle can really be done. <coughs> now let us look at uh, the auto cycle, I mentioned to you that you know 1 to 2 is the intake process, 2 to 3 is the uh, isentropic compression, then constant volume process, heat addition, then adiabatic expansion and heat rejection. If you look at what is happening in the engine, right now this is process 1 to intake is happening, both valves are now closed, compression is happening, the moment you apply the spark, 3, 4 happens and then 4, 1 is now happening and then 5, 6 is now happening. So 5, 6 and then followed by 2, 1. Okay? So this is what happens inside this engine. So in process 1, 2 intake valve is open, piston moves to bottom and therefore the fuel air mixture comes in, in actual engine we are talking about. When you are analyzing the air standard cycle, it is just the air that comes in. Okay? Then process 2, 3 is compression, both valves are closed, piston moves up, it compresses the mixture and then combustible mixture, uh, you basically apply the spark when, the, when you have minimum volume and the combustion takes place simultaneously. So in real life, you see whenever any event, whether it is combustion process due to spark or when it is combust uh, combustion process due to spray injection, is not instantaneous. It takes a finite amount of time. But when we are doing the air standard cycle analysis, we assume that the entire heat is released instantaneously at one point. And that's why this is constant volume. So as soon as you reach the maximum volume, a uh, minimum volume, all the heat is released. So this is the difference. Okay. 3, 4 process, mixture is ignited by spark, combustion takes place, it is accompanied by increase in temperature and pressure. Process 4, 5, you know, it is an expansion process, products of combustion which are hot and high pressure, they work on the piston, push it down and move it to the bottom and then pressure and because of this expansion process, this pressure and temperature of the, the working fluid actually decreases. Okay. And if you look at the 5-6 process, that means exhaust blowdown. So in this, you just open the valve. And just because this pressure is higher than atmospheric pressure, just because of the difference in pressure, half of the gases or maybe more than half is just released. So you don't have to really do any additional work. Okay. You don't want to expand it all the way because this is really not very high pressure. Okay. This is like 0.5, 1 bar, 2 bar, so it's not really much compared to this pressure which could be 
50 bar, 100 bar. In modern engines, it could be up to 200 bars. Okay, so so you allow that you use that extra pressure that you have uh, to just open so that you don't have to really push the gases out because when you have to push the gases out, you have to put work back into the system. Okay, uh, six one six one is the exhaust process valve is open and then you are pushing the piston out by physical movement of the of the piston and if there is more pressure obviously you have to do hard work that's why the exhaust blow down help you reduce this pushing force into the to guess to push the gases out of the system <coughs> so i think you have seen that we have done some analysis we will do more uh, analysis of the uh, air cycle analysis for uh, auto cycle so the assumptions let's just summarize the assumptions that we have made in this analysis so first assumption that we made is that working fluid is an ideal gas and air and it's an ideal gas so obviously if it is ideal gas then it will follow pv equal to mrt okay there is no change in the mass of the working fluid so you assume no blow by uh, through the rings or no leakage from anywhere whatever mass you have taken in you have closed the valve it remains constant there is no leakage in real life there is a leakage what a come what may you know you can do whatever you want but there will still be some leakage from the working fluids into uh, into the bottom chamber you have assumed all processes to be reversible in real life no process is completely reversible heat is assumed to be supplied from constant high pressure source and not from chemical reactions but in real life the chemical process which is extended over a finite number of crank angle degrees that takes place but you have assumed it to be <coughs> immediately supplied by some heat exchanger <coughs> then you have assumed that there is no ex heat loss from the to the surrounding okay the only heat loss is during the exhaust blowdown process whatever heat is going out that's that's the only heat loss otherwise you neglected all other heat losses okay and you have assumed the specific heats of the working fluid to be constant during the entire cycle and working fluid cv is assumed to be constant at 0.718 kilojoule per kilogram per kelvin gamma is cp by cv and you have assumed it to be the same 1.4 at all temperatures in the engine we experience temperature from 30 degree or 20 degree or even lower during the winter time all the way to about 2000 degree kelvin so you have assumed that none of these things actually r gamma cpcv they change okay so this is one big assumption and r is assumed to be uh, 287 joule per uh, kilogram kelvin or okay so this is what <coughs> is the assumption so process 1 2 is reversible adiabatic process process 2 2 3 you know it's heat is added reversibly at constant volume process 3 4 3 4 is nothing but adiabatic expansion and 4 1 exhaust blowdown is reversible at constant volume process heat is rejected okay so i think i have already done this expression and explain this to you <coughs> i think uh, what i will suggest is that uh, you look at the analysis which i am doing for for the other things so <coughs> If you look at process 1, 2, process 1, 2 is isentropic compression. So you can write for isentropic compression T1 V1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to T2 V2 to the power gamma minus 1, right? This is the equation for isentropic process. <coughs> so you can write T2 upon T1 to be V1 upon v2 to the power gamma minus 1 and v1 v1 upon v2 we can write as compression ratio r to the power gamma minus 1 okay so you can write t2 to be equal to t1 r to the power gamma minus 1 this is one important equation and this is using this equation if you have if you know the temperature of the intake air at this point which is nothing but ambient temperature and if you know the compression ratio you can figure out the temperature at the end of the compression stroke so this is for process 1 2 similarly if you look at process 3 4 
it is a, it is also isentropic expansion process same so for process 3 4 you can write this as t3 is equal to t4 r to the power gamma minus 1 this is another equation you can do in a similar way so this is equation number 1 this is my equation number 2 this is my equation number 3 okay <coughs> So once I have derived these expressions, <coughs> then you know from these two equations, I can write T2 by T1, T2 by T1 is what? R to the power gamma minus 1 and this is equal to T3 by T4 because that is also R to the power gamma minus 1. So T2 by T1 is equal to T3 upon T4, okay. So then I can write this equation, rearrange this equation, I can write T4 upon T1 is equal to T3 upon T2, okay. And if I subtract 1 from both sides, I can write T4 upon T1 minus 1, this is equal to T3 upon T2 minus 1. And this I can write again as T4 minus T1 upon T1 and that is equal to T3 minus T2 upon T2. And then again I can rearrange this and I can write as T4 upon T1 minus T3 minus T2 and this is equal to T1 upon T2. This just goes to this side and this just goes to this side, that is it, okay. <coughs> so this is one expression I get and this is my equation number 4. Now what I do? If I look at this equation, here I have 1 minus T4 minus T1 upon T3 minus T2. So I just put this here and if I do that, then my equation 1 <coughs> now becomes efficiency term is 1 minus T1 upon T2. <coughs> so this is my expression. So now I have eliminated two temperatures which I do not know. So I have just eliminated this as this one. Now again here also I do not know what is T2. So can I just eliminate this as well and I can write this as efficiency equal to 1 minus <coughs> what is uh, T1 upon T2. T1 upon T2 is 1 by r to the power gamma minus 1. So I can write this as 1 minus 1 upon r to the power gamma minus 1. So this is a very, very important expression for finding out the efficiency of the engine, okay, if you know the compression ratio. So what it really tells you is that if you are trying to find out the efficiency of a auto cycle engine, the only thing it is dependent on is compression ratio. Okay. So once you know higher, once you have a uh, given compression ratio, you can figure out what is the efficiency. And this also tells you that what will happen to R going up, if I increase the value of the R, what will happen to my efficiency? Efficiency will increase. So that means efficiency will increase if my compression ratio also increases. Okay. <coughs> so auto cycle efficiency only depends on the compression ratio. If I draw a curve between say compression ratio and efficiency on the y axis, <coughs> this is what my curve looks like, okay. It will not come down, it will go like this. So suppose this is my, and this also depends on gamma actually. So gamma is what? Cp by Cv. So that means to some extent the thermal efficiency also depends on what is the working fluid you are dealing with. Suppose you are dealing with gamma as value of gamma as 1.2 which is for carbon dioxide. This is the this is the curve for the efficiency. If you are dealing with air, so this is air and for the air gamma is 1.4. So that means if you have a, if you want to do, analyze the, if you want the working fluid to be air, then it will have a higher thermal efficiency compared to 
if the working fluid is carbon dioxide. Of course, in real life, it is impossible to have CO2 as a working fluid, but theoretically, we are assuming that if the working fluid is having a gamma of 1.2, its thermal efficiency will be low. Now, the, going by the same, uh, this thing, if you are using any monoatomic gas, and monoatomic gases may have higher uh, gamma of 1.67. So mono, many of the monoatomic gases have a much higher gamma and therefore theoretically their thermal efficiency will be higher than the engine which, will, which is using air as a working fluid. Of course, in real life we neither use monoatomic gases nor uh, CO2, we only use air because it is available free, we do not have to pay for it, it is abundant and all that. But theoretical analysis, you know, it, it depends on gamma. <coughs> Okay, so now let us also go ahead and uh, do the analysis for a couple of other parameters. <coughs> so, if, if you just look at it, <coughs> what is the net work run? So, net work done of this cycle will be work done from for in the process 3, 4 minus the work done in the process 1 to 2. 3 to 4 is where the work is being generated, 1 to 2 where the work is being put in. <coughs> and if you apply the first law of thermodynamics, there is no heat loss from it. This will be equal to what? This will be equal to? Q1 minus Q2, right? <coughs> so now this uh, W net will be what is what is W34? W34 in terms of PV it can be written as P3V3 minus P4V4 divided by gamma minus 1. So, I do not need to explain, do this derivation, all of you are aware of this. Similarly, this can then be written as P2 V2 minus P1 V1 upon gamma minus 1. Okay? <coughs> and this will be equal to, what is Q1? Q1 can be written as M C V T3 minus T2 minus Q2, which is M C V T4 minus T1. So, this is the expression. You can use any of these expressions to find out what is the no network output from a auto cycle engine. There is another parameter when we defined. There is another parameter for the characterization of the engine performance was BMEP, brake mean effective pressure. So, <coughs> or mean effective pressure, for example. We just say mean effective pressure PM. This is a very important parameter. And its definition is <coughs> w net <coughs> divided by swept volume v s this is the definition okay so what is swept volume this you can write as w net divided by v1 minus v2 that's what is the swept volume right and <coughs> this can therefore be written as efficiency and you can write as auto cycle if you want or you just need manage with neta into q1 q1 is the heat input divided by v1 minus v2 <coughs> now we know that cv is equal to r upon gamma minus 1 this we know already so we put this so then we can write Pm is equal to efficiency term into what is Q1? Q1 we can find from this expression 
this is m c v t 3 minus t 2 divided by v 1 minus v 2 right and this c v then again we can write in terms of from this equation we can write this as efficiency term into m r t 3 minus t 2 divided by gamma minus 1 into v 1 minus v 2. All I have done is I have replaced this C v with r upon gamma minus 1. That is it. That is the only change. <coughs> okay. You can also write this expression P m as efficiency term into P 3 <coughs> V 3 minus P 2 V 2 upon gamma minus 1 into V 1 minus V 2. Okay. <coughs> Why you can write this? <coughs> this you can write this because m r t 3 minus t 2 is equal to p 3 v 3 minus p 2 v 2. Okay? So, this can then be written as <coughs> v 3 and v 2, if you look at v 3 and v 2, v 3 and v 2 is same thing, v 3 and v 2 is equal to v c. So, from this equation you can take v 3 out and you can write this as efficiency term into p 3 minus p 2 into v 2 which is the common factor and gamma minus 1 into v 1 minus v 2. And this you can write because v 3 is equal to v 2. Okay. <clears throat> now, this expression we continue to simplify it and this expression can therefore be written as efficiency term into p3 minus p2 divided by gamma minus 1 and this term you bring in the bottom so then you can write as v1 by v2 minus 1 <coughs> and what is v1 by v2 r so this you can write as efficiency term p 3 minus p 2 divided by gamma minus 1 into r minus 1. Okay? Now, what you do you can also take p 2 out. So, this term can be written as neta p 2 and this you can write as p 3 upon p 2 minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1 into r minus 1. Okay? And what is P 3 by P 2? What did we define? Pressure ratio, which is R P. So, can I write this now as P M mean effective pressure is equal to neta into P 2 into R P pressure ratio minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1 into r minus 1. Okay? <coughs> P 2, now P 2, what is P 2 by P 1? P 2 I do not know. Can I write P 2 in terms of P 1? So, I can write this as P m is equal to neta and P 2 I can write as P 1 into 
r to the power gamma into r p minus 1 upon gamma minus 1 into r minus 1. Why I can write this? Because p 2 is equal to p 1 into r to the power gamma isentropic compression in process 1 to 2. Okay? So, so this is my main expression for, <coughs> for the mean effective pressure. Here I have thermal efficiency, initial pressure, compression ratio, working fluid property, uh, pressure ratio minus 1 divided by working fluid property gamma minus 1 into r minus 1. So, now I can easily calculate what is my mean effective pressure of the engine. All right, so, so I think this is pretty much clear. Uh, we have worked out this equation and we have worked out the efficiency term in terms of 1 minus 1 upon r to the power gamma minus 1. So, if you look at the auto cycle, the efficiency of the air standard auto cycle is a function of only one parameter which is the compression ratio and to some extent it is dependent on working fluid property, but in real life it really does not matter because we are not going to use any other working fluid other than air. I mean we will use of course, it will change to the extent that if you change the fuel for example. So, then that fuel properties will make a difference in the properties of the working fluid because then the working fluid composition will change. To that extent it will change the properties, but we know that the amount of fuel that you put in is really very small compared to the amount of air that is taken in. So, the properties are not changed to that extent. We have seen that if we increase the compression ratio of an engine, the thermal efficiency of your auto cycle engine will be higher and the compression ratio cannot be beyond increased beyond a certain limit because you have a problem of knocking. So, unfortunately, you would you know you cannot increase the compression ratio to the extent you would like actually. So, uh, if you increase the compression ratio beyond 10, 10 and a half, you run into red zone where your engine will knock very heavily and therefore, that puts a limit on how much compression ratio you can use for a spark ignition engine. Okay? And knocking is a very, very destructive phenomena. <coughs> it can really damage your engine in no time. Okay? It, it leads to a lot of noisy combustion and rough operation of the engine. We will talk about detail in detail about what knocking is and how it happens and how, what are the measures that we can take to control the knocking in later lectures. But for the time being, please understand that compression ratio limitation in SI engine is put because of knocking. Okay? <clears throat> so, now let us come to the diesel cycle. This is all the analysis about the uh, spark ignition or auto cycle. Let us move on to the diesel cycle. Diesel cycle is slightly different uh, compared to the auto cycle because in diesel cycle we assume that the heat addition takes place at constant volume, uh, constant pressure instead of constant volume. In uh, auto cycle it is constant volume. In diesel cycle or compression ignition cycle, the entire heat addition takes place at constant pressure. So, rest of the processes remain same. For example, 1 to 2 and 6 to 1 both are intake and exhaust blowdown processes. And of course, just like previous case in when we do air standard cycle analysis, we tend to ignore these processes because these are coincidental line processes and they do not occupy any area. And from cycle analysis point of view, they really do not have too much of a significance. What is important here is process 2 to 3, which is isentropic compression just like auto cycle same thing you know uh, but here you see in in auto cycle the heat addition was being done at constant volume but here in diesel cycle this is done in the in the constant pressure process okay and then you come to a point where heat addition stops and then the expansion starts and once the expansion starts this process 4 5 is expansion which is just like auto cycle it will be uh, isentropic expansion process and 5, 6 just like in SI engine this will be exhaust blowdown process. So, if you compare the auto cycle with the diesel cycle, the only major when I am saying compare, I am saying comparison of 
air standard cycle. The only major difference being that the heat addition in auto cycle takes place at constant volume and in diesel cycle the heat addition process takes place only at constant pressure. But when you come to the analysis part, the analysis is completely different. Analysis of the diesel cycle because of this process becomes completely different, we will see that. So diesel cycle is the air standard cycle for compression ignition engines or diesel engines. Limitation of the compression ratio can be overcome by compressing the air alone. So in normally in SI engine we compress, we do not compress the air, we compress mixture of air fuel ratio and there you know knocking happens towards the end of the uh, combustion. So that can be overcome because you are only now compressing air and therefore there is no such limitation on the diesel engine about the compression ratio. You can keep on increasing to up to 17, 18, no problem. Okay. The only thing here, <coughs> here also there is a limitation on the compression ratio, but it is not put by any uh, combustion limitations. It is put because you know if you increase the compression ratio, the pressure inside the combustion chamber is going to go up and up and up and you are adding more and more heat. So the peak pressure becomes high. So in order to tolerate that peak pressure, what you have to do? you have to add more and more metal, more and you have to make the walls of the combustion chamber and all other component piston, everything has to be made thicker. So the weight keep on increasing and beyond a compression ratio of 17 or so, if you keep on adding, the weight becomes so heavy that the advantage because of the increase in compression ratio diminishes. Okay. So that is why in most practical engines, these CI engines, the compression ratio is limited to 17, but if you say that I want to make a compression ratio 50, you know there is something called RCM, uh, rapid compression machines, which have very high compression ratio. These are these work on diesel cycle, so there is no limit. The only thing is that they they are not very practical machines. So if you want to make a practical machine, the compression ratio has to be limited. Okay, so <coughs> in a engine, diesel engine, the we inject the fuel in the cylinder in the spray form and then the spray of the liquid droplets, it mixes with the, with the air, forms fuel air mixture which can possibly burn and then combustion happens. But then if you look at the actual cycle, in the actual cycle injection, evaporation, mixing and then combustion. So it takes a finite amount of time, crank angle degree. But when you are doing air standard analysis, this happens instantaneously. Okay, heat addition also happens instantaneously.